Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's March 23rd. This will be our chart lesson for today. Uh, not a lot of trades today. Um, in the end, it's just a big trading range. We spent most of the trading day in this range, this tight, from 21.02 to about 21.06 or so trading range. So not much really happening at all there. Um, you know, it really wasn't obvious we were in that range until maybe right about right here, but we spent the rest of the day in there, and of course we've had this late afternoon sell-off, but um, for the most part, it was pretty straightforward price action. Notice this channel working up, the break, the move to a new high, the channel working down, the break, two legs up, and then we move, we've moved to a new low. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Even this small one on the way up, we got the break, the move to a new high before we finish this, the retest on this one. So pretty straightforward. Uh, again, not a lot of entries, just kind of a slow, dull day if you didn't start trading earlier. And then most of these early trades are a little bit iffy. Um, but let's talk about each trade, and then we'll, um, again, it's not going to take long today because there's just not much to it. Um, but the first trade I saw, uh, it's a little bit iffy. I really thought this channel was going to be up here at the time and it may be up there. Maybe we just couldn't get back to it. It doesn't really matter, but, uh, notice the new low first entry pullback. There's a second entry short. You don't want to be getting short up here for sure. Not moving this far above the EMA, unless you're just looking for a pullback to the EMA. And I think that's way too dangerous. Um, so there's a failed second entry short here, so you might take that long. Uh, it's because it really, you know, that's what I was looking at as the highs, and I think that to be right. And because it's so close to the highs, it's a little bit iffy. But then you get a nice second entry long right here after two legs back to the trend line, and that's really the first pull back to the trend line. So, uh, and it's not a perfect signal bar, but this is a good enough setup to where you're probably going to push on up. And uh, you don't know that it's going to take off like that, but you you know you're expecting it to push on up and head towards this last high right here first, and then of course on up to here. And this thing just rockets on through. I'm sure they caught a bunch of people sleeping here to the short side uh, and trapped some people. But if you see the trend line, and you see the channel, you know what's going on. And then you get a break up here, basically a double top and a break. And had this broke lower and then turned up and went out above this bar here, but notice it couldn't, none of these bars broke lower. So even though it pulled back a little bit and gave you a little lower high, it's not a great setup. Uh, what I would think you would want to do is wait on this bar to close, and then if you got a break above it, try a limit order. And you could have gotten filled a tick or so back. Uh, so if you saw that and played it that way, that's probably okay. But otherwise, I think you got to skip this trade. Uh, you're looking for a new high, but you want to get in there too early. Uh, and there is, I don't have it on here, but there is a little channel working down. And that was really the first close outside. We didn't have any new lows. So that was another reason to be a little bit concerned about entering there. But this was still a pretty strong trend at this point. And sometimes you can't get a correction much more than that. So, uh, But then you make the new high, you pull back, you get a first entry, you pull back, you get a second entry. And this is where you got to be really concerned because we're right there at those matching highs running across there. You've got to break a new high and you just don't have much room there. You don't even have a good signal bar. You don't even have a good second entry. So when that fails and turns down, again, it's a little aggressive for a short yet, but you definitely don't want to be getting long in there. But there's enough room to get out before you get back to this EMA if you play this right. So I like that for a move back, hoping you might catch the high of the day. And, of course, it was an easy scalp, and then it pulls back, and that's your first two swings, and this confirms this little trend line working down, and you get a, that's basically a failed second entry long. Just go short there. Another quick, easy move, and then it pulls back. First entry, pull back, and you get a second entry short. It's all right across that trend line. Everything's closing below it. Another nice, easy scalp. And then you start to see this support across here, and you're right into that. Um, until it broke lower and you get a couple of failed entry, you get a failed second entry long and then it tries to go long again and fails and notice how that trend line's still holding. So, uh, I like that entry and it's like a breakout pullback short, uh, failed second entry long. It's like a double trap. 
Um, a lot of reasons to like that to the short side. Again, another quick, easy move, and then guess what? It bounces. Uh, I don't think you can go long here, um, even though it's very tempting, because you've got this sure thing working down. There's no doubt that trend line is valid, and uh, this is your first break, and so there's a you know you don't know that it doesn't go a few ticks higher and turn down, and uh, it ends up going higher, and you get your first break of that little channel, and you get a second entry long, uh, and again, that bounces right off that. I like this because of the failed second entry short, and it's a relatively bearish setup there, but it's right into that support, so you can't go short there, so you just sit tight, and I like that for a long, looking for the retest of the high off of this. Uh, I really thought we may go higher here and never come back to the low side, but it didn't turn out that way, but... It's very rarely that that won't turn out to be a good trade, and a lot of times on that setup you'll catch the you know you'll catch the lows of the day right in here, and you make another leg up similar to this leg up. But that didn't happen today. You end up finding resistance up here yet again. Um, now you got your break of this channel, a move to a new high, a little double top, and then a lower high, and that's a failed second entry long. That's a reversal pattern. Uh, a nice easy short and you could have ridden this all the way down and still be in it uh, it's not 315 yet so you could have ridden this all the way to basically almost the close of the day and you never had one bar if you just moved your stop once you really started uh, tanking here if you just moved your stop above each bar you'd still be in this trade of course you'd be wanting to exit because you only got a few minutes it's 311 so you only got about four more minutes so this would probably be a uh, an excellent place to uh, exit this trade uh, that's what I saw today, and you, there's probably even a short right in here, but it's it's way after 2 o'clock. It's late in the day. It's right at strong support. There's a chance you bounce, so I think you're better off. If you weren't in up here, I think you just want to watch this one go without you. Um, but this was the trade of the day. This trade and this trade were the trades of the day, and these were easy scalps for the most part, but you just didn't get anything. There just wasn't much movement today until... You know, there was a little bit early this morning before the regular open, and then there's a little, and then all the real movement came this afternoon. So there just wasn't much to, there wasn't any big trades to make any real money off of. And on those days, I generally just, you know, unless I'm getting a key entry point, I'll just scalp out if I like, if I take a trade, uh, and may not even try to catch any runners. So, uh, but that's hard to do because you never know. There, there's there's pluses and minuses to doing it that way because you'll never catch those runners if you don't hold any. And uh, if you never catch any, you're missing out. I mean, it only takes a move or two like this to catch each week to make some to really change your bottom line. You know, I get a lot of people that that send me emails and you know they're just at break even. They can't get past break even. But then you get to talking to them and they don't use runners or they can't don't catch any runners or whatever. And if you can catch a few of those runners, it doesn't change. It doesn't take much to really change your uh, profit factor, your bottom line. So, um, and you know, if you just hold hold one on every trade, eventually you're going to catch some. Uh, if you don't let your mind screw you up, I mean, that's the reason I'm always looking for targets and places. And once it started going lower, the first thing you should have done. It said, hey, my minimum target is going to be a move equal to that first move. And that puts you down to right in here. So, you know, if you can catch this here and ride it to here, you know, even if you exit right there, that's a pretty good move. But once you get your trend line, until you see something breaking above that, just stay with it. And uh, I actually got an email just recently with somebody that said they've been doing that on their, uh, they're catching the runners and they're just hanging with them until they get a break of the, the trend line and when they do they exit and, they're, and they get most of the move that way I mean just right here if you'd have hung with this until it broke right above here look you'd have got that whole move down except for maybe the last point and you can't you can't get a hundred percent of everything I tell people that don't be greedy uh, just like right here if you'd have exited when it broke right here you'd have got out within a point or so of that high now you'd have missed out on this part but it's not worth risking it. Just go ahead and exit, and then you get another entry, and you get the rest of it on that next entry. And there's and there's actually a trend line working up through here too. 
And you see that. And if you waited till you exit right in, you know, when it breaks right in here and exit, you get all of that, but except maybe a point or so or a few ticks. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, doesn't mean it's easy, so don't take that the wrong way. Uh, but it's not as hard as most people make it to be. The problem is most people just don't know the right things to do. And then once they learn the right things, their mind talks them. It, it's a lot of this is mental. So the first key key to it is to find something that works, a strategy that works. And really, once you get your mind right, most people that have their you know that are mentally prepared to trade that have their mind right, and they have that ability to control their mind and not listen to it so much, and do what they think they're supposed to do. They can take any strategy and make money almost. Um, but this one gives you something, you know, some easy to see patterns and, uh, I, you know, it's amazing how many emails I get from people that say, hey, you know, I always used to hear you say that when the light goes off, I'll really know it. And a few times I think I'm there and then later I find out I'm not, but the light really did finally go off and I really do now get it. It does make sense. I, I know exactly what you were talking about. I get those emails, several of them, almost weekly. And so um, just keep working, keep practicing, keep going at it. Don't wait. Don't even attempt to use your real money because you're just going to donate it to somebody, another trader if you do, or some uh, big trading firm or something. Just, just stay on the SIM. And when you can double a SIM account or triple it, then you might be ready to try it live. But then you're still going to go through that phase where you got to get your mind right. So just remember that. Um, this doesn't happen overnight. If it did, everybody would be traders. It's like getting any, it's it's like anything worth doing. If you want to be a doctor, be prepared for a long, lot of years, a lot of study and sacrifice. If you want to be a lawyer, be prepared for a lot of years, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice. If you want to be a trader, be prepared for a lot of years, a lot of hard work, and a lot of sacrifice. It's no different than anything else that's worth achieving. Uh, but once you get there, the benefits are extremely, uh, the pay and the benefits are extremely good. So I'll just leave it at that. But anyway, not much more to talk about today. And I didn't intend to get on the, off on that tangent, but I think people need to hear it from time to time as well. So, but I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, fairly slow trading day, to be honest, but uh, it is what it is. And we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. But this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.